Yeah, so there's three big ones that stand out, you know, top and center. And then there's kind of a fourth one that I think is the, the foundational piece. So the three big ones we've talked about one, blood pressure. So if your blood pressure is 120 over 80 or better, that's important. The second is not smoking. So it turns out that smoking and blood pressure are both devastating for arteries, uh, but for different reasons, right? So smoking is devastating from a chemical perspective. So it's completely irritating to the endothelium. So the endothelium, as you know, is the single cell lining that is the innermost part of the arterial and arterial wall. So this is a pretty special organ. Um, again, it's, it's, it's a bit naive, but understandable that people just think of arteries as tubes. Um, they're much more complicated than that. They have many layers to them, but this particular layer is unusually important. It has an outsized importance because it is the one that's in contact with the luminal side, right? Where the blood is flowing in the tube and anything that injures that has significant consequences. So smoking is irritating to that in a chemical way and blood pressure is irritating to that in a mechanical way. So th those two things, basically, you just want to that's the low-hanging fruit in my world, right? You just don't want to have those things causing irritation to the endothelium because that renders you now susceptible to the third factor, which is ApoB bearing lipoproteins. I want to talk about ApoB um, in depth, but as long as don't smoke is the second recommendation on the list, uh, can we better define um, smoking uh, and what's being smoked? So assume nicotine. For um, right. What about cannabis? And what about vaping of nicotine and cannabis? Because vaping has become so much more common. Yeah, it's a great question. And it's sadly something we don't have a great answer for. So I can certainly tell you that there's no reason to believe that smoking cannabis is somehow better than smoking cigarettes. But the dose seems to be significantly lower. In other words, you know, Let's consider a person who smokes a pack a day for 20 years. We call that a 20-pack year smoker. Someone who smokes two packs a day for 15 years is a 30-pack year smoker. That's a person who's dramatically increased their risk of uh, many cancers, including lung cancer, and also their risk of cardiovascular and cerebrovascular disease. Again, I'm not a I'm not a THC guy, so I don't I can't necessarily speak for the habits of people that are smoking marijuana. I can't imagine they're smoking that much. Probably not. Yeah. So, so while on a on a joint to cigarette basis, they're probably equivalent in terms of harm. It, I don't know. Let's say a person smokes a joint a day. That would be like smoking a cigarette a day. You know, that's a twentieth of a pack. Again, I don't want to say that there's no downside to that, but it, it, it's it's probably significantly less. So I don't I don't think the risk fully tracks. I think the same is probably true for vaping. And I, I want to be clear, like, I don't think vaping is a good idea. My, my you know, I, the last time I looked at the data on this, it was surprisingly sparse. But to me, the only advantage I could see to vaping was if it was the only way a person would stop smoking. So there was, you know, I sort of looked at it as it was the definitely the lesser of two evils, but by far the better scenario was not to do any of these things. If if nicotine is what you're after, there are better ways to get nicotine, for example, through lozenges and gum and things like that. So that you shouldn't be turning to those things to, to do it. But but if it was like, if gum is here and cigarettes are here, you know, vaping was probably here. But boy, I don't know. For those listening, uh, uh, Peter spaced his hands far apart for um, gum and smoking and put vaping about a third of the way be, uh, from gum uh, toward uh, smoking. In other words, vaping isn't good for you, but it's not as bad as smoking. That would be my, that would be my, I mean, do you have a, you've probably looked into this as well. What, yeah, what we did an episode on, on nicotine. I did an episode on cannabis and, um, you know, that the discussion around cannabis gets a little contentious for reasons that aren't um, important. It's kind of funny. People, the moment someone starts to confront cannabis as a potential health harm, people say it's not as nearly as bad as alcohol, which is a crazy argument. Right, getting hit by a bus isn't nearly as bad as getting hit by a motorcycle in most cases, but sometimes, you know, so that's just kind of silly. Yeah. Um, and clearly cannabis has medical applications. Yeah. Clear, clearly. Um, 
And then it becomes an issue of the ratio of THC to CBD. Pure CBD form is actually being quite effective for the treatment of certain forms of epilepsy. Yeah. So-called Charlotte's Web, that's actually what it's called. Um, very high THC containing cannabis clearly predisposes, especially young males, to later onset psychosis. Those data are starting to become clear, clear enough to me anyway, that people ought to be aware of them at least and maybe make decisions on the basis of those. When it comes to the smoking versus vaping, it's just very, very apparent that the chemical constituents of the vape and what people are inhaling are terrible for people and are loaded with carcinogens and a bunch of other stuff, many of which cr cross the blood brain barrier. So that's what worries me the most. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously, I'm not a clinician, but anytime I hear about small molecules, you know, these small inorganic molecules getting across the blood brain barrier and then being maintained in neurons for many, many years, I worry because the experiment is ongoing mostly in young people. So anyway, without going too far down that track, I, I think if people can avoid smoking and vaping, they should. And as you mentioned, there are other delivery devices for nicotine and cannabis, tinctures and yep. patches and uh, gums and things that, um, edibles that, um, if people choose to use those substances, yeah, they can I mean, offset. I think, I think sometimes people would benefit to to imagine what the surface area of the lung is, right? If you took the alveolar air sacs of the lungs and spread them out, you would easily cover a tennis court. Mm -hmm. Remarkable. So, so yeah. just think about anytime you inhale something, you are exposing, your body is so adept at absorbing it. I mean, we have this unbelievable system for gas exchange that was designed for gas exchange. And anytime you're putting something else in that wake, you're doing a really good job of getting it into your body. So be mindful of what that is. Um, and, and that, look, that applies to, to pollution too. I mean, the, the, the PM 2.5 data is pretty good. I, I think once you, so particulates that are less than 2.5 microns are, are getting straight into the body, um, which is like a great argument for avoiding air pollution, right? I mean, I, I, I always find it funny not to get off on this tangent, but to me, the most compelling arguments around cleaner energy have nothing to do with greenhouse gases. They have to do with air pollution. Hmm. I promise you more people are dying from the particulate matters in air that result from burning coal than are ever going to die from the CO2 emissions that result from that. It, it's not, it's, and, and I would argue that's going to be two orders of magnitude. It's not even in the same zip code. That makes sense. During the fires, I, which seemed to follow me, uh, because when I was in Northern California, there were a bunch of fires and we were, were constantly looking. I uh, mean, wake up in the morning, everything was covered with ash. Uh, my dog was having trouble breathing. I was having trouble breathing. Everyone was suffering. Uh, but there are websites that one can go. You can just look at air pollution. Yeah. And, and we tend to only do this during fires. And then, I'm, you know, when I'm in Southern California, there tend to be fires here. So, um, you know, it's correlation, not causation. But um, for sure, I didn't set those fires, folks. But... <laughs> it, it's clear that it disrupts your breathing for a very long period of time. But it's the long tail of that that we're really talking about here. The very small particulate that we know firefighters, for instance, and certain um, industrial workers can end up with that stuff embedded in their brain tissue for extremely long periods. It's just not good. Um, you make a really interesting point about um, the the, uh, the call for cleaner energy. Um, can we run that one up to, to uh, Washington <laughs> or settle some of the debates about climate change just by getting straight to right, the, right. the health like, needs? I feel like just bypass all the, all the garbage that's um, that's being spewed back and forth and just and basically get to the issue at hand, right? Yeah, just 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 make it better for people to not die from the direct consequence. <laughs>